everyone. This is Heather Havenwood with Raw um, with the win. And every week I do a show called Raw with Heather Havenwood. And I'm starting to do it on Facebook Live first. And then what I do is I take that video and then export the MP3. And then I make my podcast called Raw with Heather Havenwood, So, um, which is part of the win series. And it's published every Monday. So I'm very excited about that. And, and just so you know, uh, in the last, I started podcasting um, as a host back in June of 2016. And, and what's been really fun about it is not only have I met a ton of great people, but I've also done a ton of interviews and I'm actually about six or seven weeks ahead of schedule. And so I've started to add a solo show. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I want to one, get my, my story out, you know, share what I'm learning through uh, this experience of podcasting, but also, you know, all the different things I'm learning in the last 15 years of online marketing. What's really interesting today, this is, I'm, I'm talking to you tonight. It's like nine o'clock at night on a Thursday night. And I have done four or five interviews today. Now, some of these I actually did inter like I was interviewing them and the other way around. What's interesting is all three of the people that I interviewed and they interviewed me were all sales guys. They're all guys and they were all sales guys. In fact, Pat Helmers, I interviewed this morning at early at 8 a.m., 12 hours ago. And then this afternoon, Wes Schaefer, hey Wes, the sales whisperer. Uh, Pat Helmers was the sales babble. And then I just got interviewed by Anthony Kirby. God, that was a great guy. He is an amazing guy. I had a lot of fun listening, talking to him. He interviewed me. He's in the, um, he's from the UK and he's in Aussie and I'm here in Austin, Texas. So I want to share what I learned today after interviewing two top sales guys and then being interviewed by a really top coach of Anthony Kirby all in one day. And here I am sharing with you raw with Heather Havenwood, you know, uh, 12 hours later of, let's see, three interviews. There was, I'm sorry, four interviews. I forgot about another one. I actually was on another interview today. So I've done one, two, three, four, and then I had a fifth, uh, but Stacey and I actually decided to do another day. So it was going to be five in one day. I absolutely love sharing my story. So that's what I want to talk to you about today is what that, what is sharing your story? And I actually talked about this on Anthony Kirby's show about 30 minutes ago. What I was sharing with him is one, and, and, and I've been in the dating business for a long time. So a lot of y'all know that one thing I've learned about the dating business, um, not the dating business, but about men is that women, the number one and number two skill set of, of, of attraction to men from women. Okay. Basically, another way to say that is guys like really hot looks and girls like men who tell stories or what are funny or, um, as David would say, cocky funny. I mean, it's a guy who can tell a story. Now, what's really funny about that or weird or odd or interesting is that one is one of one of the number one fears for people is public speaking. So one of the things that's most attractive to women, to men all right, is telling the story and public speaking. And yet the number one fear for people in general are is public speaking. Okay, there you go. Now you understand about traction. Okay, so what I'm going to share with you today is about storytelling. And I'm going to give you the exact six, six stages of every single story. Now, I didn't make this up. I'm I'm sharing with you what I've learned multiple learned basically um, from I've learned this from the hero's journey who uh, was it was it's a huge book called the hero's journey You're welcome to go get it on Amazon and then there's a gentleman by the name of Mike, Michael Hogg he owns a company called story mastery what he teaches he's like a writer and copywriter he, he teaches he teaches the plot structure of every single successful movie. And they've done studies on this. They've taken the hero's journey and it's a structure and they've said, okay, well, maybe we shouldn't use it on every movie. Maybe they'll do a love story differently or they'll do a comedy differently. What they've learned is there's like a recipe to success and the recipe to success for movies Okay, two hour movies that we're all known here in the world. We love movies. Movies are very successful because it tells a story, no matter if it's a comedy or a love story or action or whatever. Every single successful movie, I'm talking blockbuster movie, right? 
follows a structure. It follows a exact plot structure. Now, that's a two-hour conversation, two-hour movie. What we found is, is that when I share my story on a show or a podcast or on stage or in a virtual summit, I'm literally sharing my story in life that my true facts in the same structure that has been time tested into what people are attracted to. We as human beings are attracted to storytelling, but we are attracted in a way and we're conditioned to hear a story in a certain way. So what this whole um, structure is about, I'm going to share it with you. Okay. So you can like put it on top of your world, your story. Uh, if you want to, you can create a script of a movie, whatever it is. It is really interesting to look at the structure and then literally lay your life on top of it. And that's what I did. Um, and it's really fascinating how in a weird way, my life has become like a hero's journey. It's like, wow, I never really realized that to me. I'm just like going through life. I'm going with the obstacles that happen, right? And here I am. Um, my whole life has literally followed a hero's journey. And I bet you, yours has too. But you want to learn how to share your story in such a way that it's compelling, that it's unique, that people go, wow, you know, and uh, Anthony Kirby brought up tonight, which I think is fascinating about Elon Musk. And he's a guy that how he really got out there was he just literally was sharing his story over and over and over again. And after a while, people were like, whatever he's got, I'm buying. And that's what Steve Jobs, he's an amazing storyteller. Donald Trump is an amazing storyteller. People can say yes or no. They don't like the story. But the reality is how he shared his story over and over and over again was actually laid upon the same structure. So um, time tested. What's also interesting about this time tested structure is if you look at biblical times, uh, Noah, Jesus, um, you know, other prophets back then and disciples, when they share the story of Jesus, okay, it, it lays on top of this hero's journey. We as human beings have not changed in thousands of years. The tools might have changed, right? The iPhone, the iPad, Facebook Live, podcasting. These are tools, but we as human beings haven't altered. That's why we can open up the Bible and we can read a story and we can relate to it, like it, not like it, but we can relate to it on some human being level. And that is really what storytelling is about. Um, so I think it's really interesting that the number one attractive thing that women want in a man is storytelling. It's kind of weird. You think about it, women. If you're in a bar, let's say in a bar, a restaurant, or in a networking event, and there's a gentleman, okay, who's telling the story and there's all these people surrounding him and listening to him. Who are you going to be attracted to? That guy. He's telling a good story. What's he got? What, you know, we are attracted to that. So it's a very automatic human being nature. So here we go. I'm going to share with you the six stages. Feel free to write these down. Or again, I didn't make these up. These are not my creation. I'm sharing them with you. You can go check out storymastery.com by Michael Haig. This is the six stage plot structure. I actually heard him speak at a Russell Brunson event, a very private event, a couple of years ago in Baltimore. It was actually a few weeks after my mother passed away when I went there. I wasn't in the best of spirits because it was like three weeks from the, after the funeral. Um, but I remember his presentation more than any of them. I remember the presentation really well because I was starting to think, yeah, it really is about storytelling. Um, I think I remember it mostly because I did the eulogy or tried to do a eulogy on my mother's funeral, and I did really a bad job. <laughs> like... I did a really bad job. I, in fact, there's to this day, I'm embarrassed how bad it was because um, I wasn't prepared. I didn't write anything. I didn't know what I was going to say. So I think I did some cuss words and sat back down. So um, anyway, I think after that, I realized I didn't know how to speak in front of people. Maybe I should learn. Here we go. So six stages of story mastery. Feel free to write these down and place your life on top of that. All right. So stage one is set up full an identity. Okay, so in the world of a movie, right, or in the world of sharing your story, you what I call start in a place in time. Like, well, I was, it was, um, for me, it was uh, back in 1999, I was in corporate America. I was trial, you know, I was actually number one in the country and everything was going great. I would have been there for four years and outside sales, it was all good. That was like the setup, okay? 
point, turning point number one, opportunity. Now for me, I'm going to lay my life on it. Opportunity. For me, here I am, number one in the country in Southwestern Bell Wireless. I thought life was great. Life was going on. I've got corporate world. I'm making them money. They're making me money. It's like all good. And then all of a sudden I got fired. And I'm like, what? You know, and it really had a turning point in my life. And the turning point was, I thought that's how corporate world went. I go out, make them money. They make me a little money. Like it's all good. Again, turning point number one, opportunity. Okay. Stage two, new situation, glimpses essence. Ta-da. Lay my life on that. Okay, so here I am a couple months after I get fired. Not sure what to do. I see an infomercial one day. No kidding. This this really happened. I saw an infomercial one day. It said, all I remember it saying is, do you want to control your life? Do you want to control your destiny? And I'm thinking, yes. That's all I knew. And they said, write this name and number down. Write this time down tomorrow at 1 o'clock. We're going to be at this hotel. We'll come there and listen to our presentation. And I'm just like writing it down. This is, by the way, like 2000, year 2000, early 2000, okay? And that again, stage two, new situation, glimpses, glimpses of essence. Okay, so here I am in the seminar and I am listening to this presentation and they asked for $3,000, which I didn't have, but then here's turning point number two, change of plans. This is, this is where it came, comes from me. They say the magic words. The magic words are, um, but for your spouse, it's only $1,000. So what I did was I nudged the guy next to me. and was like, hey, can I be your spouse? And sure enough, he let me be his spouse. <laughs> so he's like, what's your name? So we walk over and I signed the dotted line as, and I kept my last name and he kept his last name and different addresses. And I said, I'm as a spouse. And they took my $1,000 and they winked at me like, yeah, whatever. And the turning point change of plans was a couple of weeks later that the people who were running the event said, hey, why don't you come work for us? And so that was a change of plans that changed my life. I moved to Orlando, Florida and started traveling the country for seven years in the seminar business. That was my turning point, change of plans. All right, so here we are on stage three. Progress vacillates between identity and essence. Oh, this was definitely for me. For seven years, I was definitely vacillating because I was in this whole world of seminar business, of speaking business, and yet all my old friends were still like in a corporate world. And I was kind of vacillating between moving into entrepreneurship, whatever that means, and owning my own business versus working for somebody else. And I was getting further and further and further away, you know, from that old world, as they call in this story, the vacillates between the identity and the essence. Okay. And then there's a turning point. Okay. Turning point number three, point of no return. Okay. For me, that's when I started a business with a business partner and it was a point of no return. We were all in. Okay. And we went balls to the wall. It was like, boom, and we went from zero to a million dollars in one year. And that's where stage five comes in, which is complications and higher stakes, which is moves steadily into essence. So during this time, we were, I mean, I was in a flow of this business. It was moving and going and moving and shaking, which again, goes back to stage four complications and higher stakes where things were moving, but the stakes were high. And there was starting to be a lot of complications, but things were going boom, right? And then turning point number four, major setback, boom. That's when I came home one day and my business partner took all the money from the bank accounts, all the merchant accounts, got turned off, uh, turned away to, not off, but turned towards him, uh, got locked out of all the, the websites and all my bank accounts were empty. So it threw me into bankruptcy and foreclosure of the house. My house was in foreclosure in that process within about 30, 60 days. And I was in, in the process of bankruptcy within six to nine months. So that was turning point number four, major setback. That was my major setback. It, it set me back in standstill mode for three, four years, maybe if you could look at it, almost five. And then what happened? Stage five, final push, retreats to identity, then returns fully to essence. And in that time frame, that what I call that dead time, about four or five years of dead time is when I really realized, it's my doggy. Hi, baby. Oh, she wants to go for a walk. Um, you'll see her. It's so funny. If y'all are on the podcast, you can't see my dog just walked in. It's like, oh, I want to spend time with you. 
And here's stage five. So stage five is final push. Now for me, what that was is moving to Austin, changing my life and choosing the entrepreneurship journey and just really focusing on my information marketing business. That was my final push. Okay. That final push. And, um, then turning point number five, climax, which is, I feel I'm in that climax. I'm really in that climax right now. I'm in stage six, which is aftermath, transformed essence. And I can, I, I feel like right now I could, you know, in the movie and I feel like I've written that hero's journey in my life. Um, and that is really what I share when I'm on a stage, when I'm on a virtual summit, when I'm on a podcast, uh, when I'm on a radio station, whatever that is. I'm out there sharing my story, right, in such a way that people can hear it in a conditional manner. And the conditional manner is a structure. It's literally laid out for you. Have you ever met somebody and you're like, wow, they're so good at sharing that story. How do they do that? How do you do that? Maybe it's their charisma. Maybe it's how they look. No, it's a structure. It literally is. It's it, By the way, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, you can see Game of Thrones. What's cool about Game of Thrones is you have like six of these going on at the same time in a two hour thing. So you constantly have like plot after plot after plot going. So it can be kind of um, uh, overwhelming. That's why I think I like it because I love all the stories. So I just want to share that with you tonight. This is Heather Havenwood with Raw. Feel free to check me out. And I got a shout out to my amazing sponsors. Thank you so much for your sponsorship and your help. So first is Thinkific. Go to heatherhavenwood.com forward slash Thinkific. Thinkific is truly an online presence where you can go and create your entire online course. It is like almost like a done for you. It's not the funnel piece, but it's like the back end piece. And I remember when we were first creating my first one, you know, zero to million dollar company. Oh my God, to create an online course was so much work. And now it is like easy peasy. And Thinkific has done an amazing, amazing job of being able to help people do that in such a way that they don't have to worry about the technology and they can focus on the content. So reach out, go check out Thinkific at heatherhavenwood.com forward slash Thinkific. The other one is Mobit. Oh man, Mobit rocks. And how you can see what Mobit does is do the following. Go ahead and text the word sexy to 72,000. Text the word sexy to 72,000. And uh, through the process, you're going to get a text and they'll say yes, say yes. And through the process, you'll actually be able to get right there in your mobile device three free chapters of my audiobook, but more importantly, you'll see how the process works and, and notice how you can use this in your business as well. So text the word sexy to 72,000, which is sponsored by and empowered by Mobit. And if you're interested in Mobit, you can go to heatherhavenwood.com forward slash Mobit. All right, guys, this is Heather Havenwood with The Win. Check me out on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and iTunes, and uh, Facebook Live. Have a great night. Talk to you soon.